It's Kato. Probably my second favorite Joe of all time is Dusty. Uh, the reason, he always seemed to have a slight southern accent to me, and as a southerner myself, it was always nice to hear a southern accent on TV, even though he came from Vegas, which was kind of weird, and maybe he wasn't southern at all, it's just how I remember it, but anyway, he was one of my favorites, the camo on the face, the full desert camo gear, I just loved it a lot. Uh, I did not know until I was much older that his name, uh, Ronald Tater, which there is no way for me to say tater without sounding like uh, I'm back home growing up on the farm, uh, you know, tater salad. But, uh, yeah, Ronald Tater, uh, a.k.a. Dusty, an anagram for Ron Brudet, designer, creator for Hasbro and the G.I. Joe series overall. Didn't know that until much later in life. I know I'm late to the game on that. All that out of the way, today I'm going to take a look at G.I. Joe Classified number 49, Dusty, which oddly enough doesn't have his full name on here, but it does have Tater on his uh, badge. So that's a look at the box. That's where for the glare. Look at that. Can't see anything like that. You got uh, Tater in the box there with his weaponry, his backpack. I like this artwork pretty well. Stats, I can't stand how they're doing these. Uh, some cool artwork there on the side. And of course, the uh, classified artwork on the back. Let's get him out of the box. Inside the package, you get quite a few accessories, or at least just enough for Dusty. You have his backpack in brown. I, I do wish they had a bit of a wash there or some more paint detail on some of the accessories that are apparently on the backpack. You have his head cover in tan and green camo with uh, green, greenish brown chin straps. Ex uh, well, not an extra magazine, a magazine for his rifle, a small knife, two sets of goggles, one larger that will go around his uh, headgear, and another that will go on the on his head without the headgear and of course his rifle with a small bipod there which is cool it's actually a different color than the black plastic on the rifle moving on to the figure dusty is really clean cut he looks like a nice clean cut all-american fella he's got that nice haircut going on the standard camo on the face um, yeah, I think it's, his head sculpt looks really good and the hair is done really well. The camo, the tan and uh, brown camo going down looks really good. Like I said, you can see Tater and the American flag there on his, uh, just below his lapel on his badge, G.I. Joe on the other side. That looks fine. I mean, it could easily be a really bland figure with it just being so two-tone, but I think it works really well. Uh, nice detailing in the legs. Again, the brown and tan camo coming down to the brown boots with the sheath for the boot knife there. Really simple figure, but I mean, it was a pretty simple design. So you have these multiple uh, goggle options for Dusty. Um, not very often do I remember seeing him without his headgear on, but if you want, you can slide these goggles on. This is the smaller ring goggles if you want him to wear those. Uh, I will probably never do that. Uh, or the other goggles go on to his headgear. And they're a little wider, so they can go on the headgear. Now, at first, man, I thought that was really loose. But I thought it was strange because, you know, Hasbro so far has been pretty good about giving us a place to store everything on a figure. So I started wondering if there was a way, maybe they made it so you could store everything so if you put the head the helmetless goggles on like that and then slide the headgear on over it uh voila you have a nice tight fitting headgear and i think that changes everything i was really disappointed in how loose that headgear was until i did that whether it's on purpose or not I don't know, but I think it probably has to be because again, Hasbro is, has been pretty good about storage on the figure and being able to put everything in there. And that's a game changer. Otherwise I would really dislike this figure because that helmet not fitting well, but with that, it fits just fine. Um, another thing, 
the the gun design is is a little weird because the magazine is back here in the stock and it can make it a little awkward to uh put in his hand just because the magazine will get in the way a little bit but uh, it still works um, i'll show that at the end at the final thoughts it'll it'll be posed in there just fine again could easily be a pretty boring figure but it's faithful so it's hard to say it's boring unless you just think Dusty is boring uh, dressed in general. Uh, articulation is no different than any of the other Joes, so I won't waste your time with that. But uh, no no pins. I think that looks good. The, no, the pinless joints still look good. Uh, the ab crunch is hidden really well within that camo, I think. Um, and it works really well. There's nothing really blocking that. So that's all good. Uh, articulation is pretty standard pretty well built too like I don't there's no uh, loose or wobbly bits now that the helmet is on there well um, paint is as good as it can be with the two-tone paint you get a little touch of green that looks it looks like a camelback straw I don't know but yeah that's that's really cool again um, the the backpack I wish was maybe had a wash over it and I'm too lazy to do that myself but very faithful representation of a modern dusty figure without losing some of the love. I do wish again that there were more hand options for these uh, standard classified figures. That would be a nice touch, but otherwise great, well-built solid figure uh, with no issues. It is as promised. For some real quick size comparisons, there he is with Tiger Force Outback, which I still haven't reviewed, but it's just a good figure, so maybe this is going to do for the review. It's great. And beside probably the largest figure in the line, Serpentor, which again, phenomenal figure. And just for something a little different, there he is beside uh, Action Force Infantry Commando. Overall, I think this is a really faithful interpretation of Dusty, and I don't have a lot to complain about. And what I can complain about is fairly minor. Uh, the helmet's too big, but that's fine. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's on purpose so that you can store the goggles. So that's not a mark off or anything. I'm always going to wish there were more hand sculpts, more hand options for this other than just standard trigger finger stuff. Really, my biggest complaint is I don't like the gun. I don't like the magazine fitting into the back. It rests up against his wrist. If it were up here, you could, you know, position it a bit better. I'm not fantastic at posing these guys anyway, so this will probably be how I leave it on the shelf. But I do wish that it was a different gun, and I probably will end up using some extra random weapon, maybe one of the Valiverse uh, Action Force weapons left over from another weapon pack or something just so i can i don't know i just don't like the gun i'll just say that that's pretty simple i think it limits his hand articulation other than that pretty spot on nothing really to complain about it's built well it's solid not a lot of wobbly bits to to complain about it's a, a nicely built figure so it's it's dusty for me and i'm okay with it guys thanks so much for hanging out with me i really do appreciate it if you made it this far and haven't subscribed already hit that subscribe button smash that like button and share this video out there with your friends please take a second to notice the name scrolling up on the left of the screen those are all my channel members if you'd like to become a channel member and help support the channel that way there's a join button below this video and a join link in the description till next time this is kato signing out see you around like a donut